12 is in the calendar office are looking forward to seeing your holiday snaps in our happy photo competition. There'll be 22 cameras as prizes and the competition runs until September the 1st. We'll be getting all sorts of snaps to look at over the next few weeks, but I doubt whether any will be like the photographs coming up next. They're the work of Leeds-born photographer Ian Hargreaves, who likes to be known as Hag. He has a show at the moment at the Photographer's Gallery in London, and he came into the studio to show some of his work to Richard. Well, if you do have your picture taken by a hag, stand by for a shock when you see the finished product, because as you can see, the end result is rather weird to say the least. And this technique, hag gets by superimposing two, three, five, seven, even eight images on the same photo. Hag, it does seem rather weird, actually. What, what's the idea of it? Uh, this is a picture of Phil Daniels for a film called Quadrophenia, which is a film of the Who's record in the late 60s. Well, why has he got two foreheads? Well, he's, he's got two foreheads, and there's him there, and also there's the bottle behind, which is like to do with an image of him being threatened by himself four times, really, like Quadrophenia, Schizophrenia. It's about psychosis. <laughs> was Phil pleased when he saw this photo of himself? He was rather staggered but he still bought one. <laughs> of course, well, while you do do portraits, of course, I think it's landscapes, if you call them landscapes, yeah. that uh, are your forte. There's one, I think, called uh, Metropolis, which shows New York actually sitting in the middle of a desert. Yeah, yeah. This was done for another record cover, which the music, the picture was, uh, was uh, inspired from the music, which is one continual piece, which ends up where it begins. And so, how many different pictures on this particular picture? I can see the pagoda there of uh, Kew Gardens. Yeah. Uh, the desert, that's Death Valley in yeah. California. Yeah. And, uh, and the Lake District behind. There's seven or eight on that altogether, which are all flowed together. To, it's based to illustrate the different mo moods of the record. And you can see it carries on with the other one that we can see here, which starts outside and actually ends up in a room with a picture of New York on the wall behind it, which is a return to the beginning of the record, but in a different place, obviously. Tell me how, how you do this technique. Is this a technique that you yourself have invented? No, I haven't invented it, but I've certainly developed it to my own satisfaction because there aren't any books that tell you how to print things in this way in that nothing is cut, the things are printed onto these pieces of paper from the original negatives. And it's just a matter of flowing and masking things and getting things to go where you want them. So it's not a montage? It's not a montage. It, and it is technically very difficult to do? Well, no, it technically just requires a lot of patience, that's all. A lot of patience. It drives me mad sometimes. So really, you're more of an artist, actually, a painter. Uh, you paint in, in photographs rather than actually take photographs, as it were. Well, if you like. I consider myself a photographer, although what I do is more allied to art, certainly. But I don't think... I can't consider myself an artist. It's for you to call me that. OK. <laughs> well, let's just, let's just see another one. What's this one? Uh, this is a visual pun, basically, which is just to do with cows and chocolate boxes and sausages and it usually makes people laugh. It repulses some people, but most people it makes them laugh. I don't think there'll be any laughing in a certain factory <laughs> in York when they see that. <laughs> is most of your work done for commission, or do you do quite a lot for, for fun? It's really? mostly done for commission at the moment, though initially I started off doing it for fun. Well, so here's Purely a tree in the middle of a London street. That's, yeah. that, is that fun? This is fun. This was done for a recording studio in London, the Pink Floyd's recording studio, and it was initially designed. It's a big mural. It's five foot by nine foot. It was supposed to have coats hung on it in the tree, but when the thing was actually put up, no one dared drill holes in it. <laughs> do you work <laughs> entirely in black and white, uh, Hag, uh, or do you ever go into colour? No, I work entirely in black and white. I've been considering going into colour recently, but I'm also very interested in hand colouring. People can hand colour photographs very exactly and very accurately to look exactly like coloured photographs if you take enough time over it. I just want to end with one of your photographs of R.D. Lang, and at first sight that's a fairly ordinary one, but if you look closely, he's got no eyes. Yeah. Well, this is to illustrate an, another record cover called Life Before Death, and it was to bring together the ideas of life and death at the same time. And uh, it was a joke to gouge his eyes out, but uh, it ended up for real. Was he pleased when he saw that photo of himself? He laughed, and then he started worrying. <laughs> Well, it certainly is a very individual technique you've got, and uh, we wish you all the very best of luck with it. Thank you very much.